You're listening to the Around the Lens podcast, the home of high-quality, roundtable, visual journalism discussion about the news, topics, and gear related to our career field. Now, here's the host of our show, David J. Murphy. Hello and welcome to episode 201 of Around the Lens. New day, new dawn, new year, new season. A lot of new fresh faces, new episodes going on. Uh, Travis Keyes, my co-host with the most. How's it going, buddy? It's going fantastic. Live from Philadelphia here. Last week was New Orleans. And uh, glad to be on a new season. How exciting is that? Indeed, indeed. Stay off the playgrounds. Don't mess with any um, gangsters or, you know, play basketball. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I know. You may have to There's move with your... Because you don't want to wander into. That's right. <laughs> don't, you may have to go to your auntie and whatever in Bel Air. Anyways. Shifts off to, yeah. <laughs> I can do that joke because I'm a dad. All right. Well, let's introduce our guest this week, uh, Mr. Andrew Harnick. Hello, Andrew. How are you doing today? Hey, guys. How are you? I'm great. Um, tell us a little about yourself. Give us a little your bio. Uh, so, well, I'm sitting here in uh, in cloudy, gloomy Washington D.C. right now. Nice. Uh, I'm born and raised in D.C. Uh, I worked for newspapers for uh, over a decade, and now I work for the Associated Press. Spend most of the time uh, covering the White House and Capitol Hill, and a little bit of sports and breaking news. Uh, sprinkled in there, so and we also cover. Yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a slow <laughs> few years. It uh, hasn't really slowed down since uh, 2015. So, oh my uh, God. yeah, it's crazy. I mean, there's so little to cover in DC nowadays. You know, everything's just working <laughs> like clockwork, and you know, it's you know, it's it's really just zero drama, right? It's a busy time in Washington for sure. Last. Uh, Four years have been uh, kind of nonstop. Wow. So, so I I spent uh, I spent all of 2016 covering uh, the, the uh, primaries. Then I then I was embedded with Hillary Clinton's campaign, and um, after she lost the election, I moved right into covering uh, Trump with uh, the rest of our AP team here in in Washington. We have ten photographers, um, so it's a as far as as far as uh bureaus go that's a that's a big team um and uh we have been we have been busy um we uh we actually added added a photographer we were nine and and now we're ten we cover wow. the we cover the white house um kind of uh basically seven days a week um from uh, eight a m until at least seven thirty usually uh, going as late as nine thirty at night. Holy um, cow! It's uh, it's probably the most important thing that AP covers visually. Do you think uh, that? So it's, it's very different from the rest of AP, where everybody else is shooting sports across the country. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you guys are you're stuck on Capitol Hill for the most part. I have to imagine. Capitol Hill, White yeah. House. We travel with the president. Okay, and we uh, and and we travel for the uh, for the election years. Cool. So uh, so it, it keeps you it keeps you very busy. Do you think Donald Trump's second term will be as crazy as his first term? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I really don't know. I I, I mean, um, you know, there's so much speculation flying around all the time. Uh, will he be reelected? Some people think that's a given. Other people. Um, uh, think that think that he could be knocked off by one of the uh, Democratic um, presidential hopefuls. Yeah, um, it really is. And, uh, you know, we we don't. You know, we don't. We're we're in the business of covering what happens. Um, sure, I, I, it really has a feel of expect the unexpected because anything could happen nowadays, which proves exactly. his election. <laughs> exactly, it's very true. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's definitely been interesting four years, and I think the uh, third term, his third term, is going to be the most exciting. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, you know he does make that joke from time to time. Does he? he yeah, he, uh, well, he makes that joke. His jokes he, are uh, like poking at reality, testing the waters usually. <laughs> well, you know what they say: scholars will debate not what was better, his first or his second term, or will be his third or his fourth term. Those will be which was the better term. Anyways, 
Okay, enough of that. Let's get on with our first topic tonight. Uh, We are talking about, of course, uh, news and visual journalism. Um, A college newspaper, the Northwestern, uh, at Northwestern University, the Daily Northwestern, uh, was uh, featured, you know, grabbed a lot of national attention because its editor-in-chief basically apologized for the coverage it ran on a student protest at the college. Uh, there was a guest speaker. Um, who wants to remind me who the name of the guest speaker was? Go ahead. You got this. Uh, it, it was Sessions. Sessions. Yes. Was, uh, was <laughs> Thank you. On campus. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Sessions was uh, Jeff Sessions was uh, speaking on campus. And basically, you know, uh, of course, this sparked protesters and uh, the newspaper does what the newspaper does, which is go out and cover it. And, uh, you know, I guess some of the students got pressure from some of their other students about this. And um, so it got back to the newspaper and then, you know, the newspaper, the editor in chief, along with, uh, I think, eight other signatories on the the sort of editorial or the apology, um, you know, basically said that, you know, the photos were not. Let's see here if I can find the quote. Uh, some of the protesters found photos posted to reporters, Twitter accounts, tra- re-traumatizing and evasive. These photos have since been taken down, um, uh, despite the fact uh, using records to contact potential sources. Uh, here it says, while our goal is to document history and spread information, nothing is more important than ensuring our fellow students feel safe. And in situations like this, they are benefiting from our coverage rather than being actively harmed by it. We failed to do that last week, and we cannot be more sorry. So, of course, you know, they they publish this, and it just, you know, gets the ire of every single working journalist. And probably, you know, in addition to the professor at the school, because Northwestern is a well-known, you know, journalism news uh, school. And, you know, basically everybody's saying, you know, like here, uh, let's see here, Whitaker, Whitaker, who's Whitaker? In this story that I pulled here, I'm looking at. Uh, Charles Whitaker, he's the uh, media integrated media communicate marketing communications dean at the Northwestern University Medill School of Journalism, saying, you know, basically, I patent reject the notion that our students have no right to report on communities other than those which they hail, and I will never affirm that students who do not come from marginalized communities cannot understand and accurately convey the struggles of those populations. And unlike our young charges of the daily, who in heartfelt though not well considered editorial apologize for their work on the session story. Quote, unquote, you know, it just basically goes on and again, you know, saying, I think it's a testament to their sensitivity and sense of community, you know, essentially saying like he gets it. He understands why, where the apology is coming from. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're doing their job and they're apologizing for doing their job. So let me throw it over to you, Andrew. What do you think of this whole situation? What are your thoughts on it coming from, you know, the world of AP? You know, you know, how do you how do you sort of uh, quantify this whole situation? Well, uh, and, and has there I been mean, discussion, the, you know, about this in your sort of circles? The, the day the the news broke, people people were talking about it. I mean, I I, I think that um, their response was widely criticized by a vast majority of the journalistic community. I don't think it's really necessary for me to pile on that, but but a, a few points. Number one, these are th- these are still at the end of the day students. Um, they are not working professionals. Um, I think that's just important to to kind of uh, think about right off the bat. Um, but you know, the emphasis was was placed on not re-traumatizing students over delivering the news um, that a former Trump administration um, official was was being protested at a university. Um, you know that um, you, you don't have to go very far back in history i mean protests in universities are are nothing new um and you know the visual if we're you know just to, to to stay on the visual aspect of of the entire story um you know if you look back to the vietnam war the uh the photograph um made at kent state um yeah. was um definitely a traumatizing photo i'm sh- definitely in the moment for those involved Um, but because that was a traumatizing photo that was shared throughout the United States and, um, potentially went across the globe, um, 
you know, that, that changed the, that changed the course of history for the Vietnam war, uh, in large part because of that photo. Um, so at the end of the day, the point of journalism is to deliver news to people. Right. And I guess that goes to another point I saw, you know, somebody else report on, you know, cause again, this was picked up by, you know, major publications and in, in addition to, you know, some of the different outlets I check out. And it was interesting because, you know, people go to protest because they want to be seen, you know, it's, it's people protest to gather attention, to get the media to pay attention to what they're protesting to help again, propagate a cause or belief or whatever they're trying to protest right. against. If, if protesting garnered no attention from anyone, then why would people do it? So right. it is interesting. I mean, I Go ahead. America is in an inter- you know America is in an interesting moment right now, where some in society are very very cautious um, about what people say and how people act, and others are um, on the complete other end of that spectrum, pushing back on political correctness and uh, behaving and speaking in whatever way they see fit. Um, and so, I mean, this is this is an example of a kind of a larger trend, I think, right? Um, that, that we're seeing across the United States. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, what are we seeing as a larger trend? Protest in general, or what? What's the larger trend? No, no, I I, I think that there is a, a cautiousness and a concern for individuals, uh, and you know, making sure that feelings aren't being hurt. Uh, you know, that there, there's uh, numerous examples of that. Um, so, uh, um, you know, so I think that's, I think that's a major takeaway from this entire story. Um, well, that's, that's another takeaway. That, sorry, well, I just want to talk on that point for just one second before we, cause I mean, that's an interesting point. Cause I mean, one of the things I want to know is like, is this indicative of something larger? And you're basically saying that sort of, yes, it is. You know, we're seeing this sort of shift. And is that something you've seen just in sort of the college side or on the college side and sort of the civilian or, you know, greater, you know, larger Nordic media side? Um, you know, I, I have experienced um, uh, examples of this um, personally when I'm working out out on the street um you know somebody that's and this is not this is not something uh you know this is something that's happened uh for years you know somebody part of a really visually striking moment that has news value you know that i've made a photograph of um and this happened a lot more when i was in newspapers i would cover a lot of a lot more um, things on the street as opposed to, um, you know, on Capitol Hill. But, you know, when, after, after you make a photograph and you attempt to get somebody's name, where they're from, what they're doing, sometimes they want, sometimes they want you to be there and take that photo and know who they are and why they're, why they're, why they're there. Other times, um, they get upset. They don't understand why you're taking this photo. Um, it could be in a, uh, a traumatizing moment for, for this individual, um, um, or an embarrassing moment. I, but you know, as a, as a news photographer, you're there to, to report what happened visually and, um, and accurately. And, um, you know, that's, that's your job. Um, you know, sometimes when you explain, when you, you know, take the, if they're listening and they're taking the time to understand what you're doing, once you explain, why you're there and what you do and um, who you are and who you, who you're uh, reporting for, you know, that, that, that changes the discussion and they say, okay, yeah, no, I'm, I, I've actually had people come back to me after they've yelled at me, you know, what are you doing? Why are you taking my picture? I don't, you know, you can't take my picture. They'll come back and, um, you know, say, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I'm, ha- I'm glad you're here. And, you know, this is my name and this is where I'm from and this is what's going on. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, have, having a dialogue is always important. Sometimes, sometimes things happen so fast that you, you can't really have that dialogue before, uh, before the event occurs. Um, sometimes you don't want to have that conversation 
initially because um, you're you're kind of getting in the way of of what what's unfolding in front of you. Um, so you, you, it's a balance, and you have you know obviously uh, you as a photographer taking pictures of of something is going to change what what happens. Uh, you know you, you are, you're not invisible right. uh, to what's going on in front of you. People most of the time know that you're there and you know once uh, once they you, you want to kind of fade into the background, be a fly on the wall, once they kind sure. of understand what you're doing and why you're there, a lot of times they'll kind of forget about you and go back to doing what they're doing and yeah um, you know working photojournalists, know this and they've, they've dealt with situations like this, uh, you know, but like this hypothetical that I'm coming up with, uh, yeah. many times. Well, I remember one time I was covering a protest and it, well, it was, I was covering a larger story about pro and not pro war, but you know, pro troop and anti-war protesters, at least that's how they position themselves, right? Two different separate groups on opposite side of a subject. And I thought it was an interesting to kind of cover both sides and on the, um, anti-war, side or bring the troops home side, you know, uh, basically it was, you know, there were some, uh, kids, you know, not kids, kids, like teenagers, right. High schoolers, probably, um, maybe young college students. I don't know, but you know, I was covering the, the protesters and what they were doing. I mean, they were marked, they were doing a March down like times square, right? So they were out there in public, you know, they weren't hiding themselves. But when I was trying to take their picture and get their names and stuff like that, they would rebut with, I'm trying to think about my future, you know, like, again, worrying about how their image is going to be seen as they sort of go on through life and sort of, you know, and, and like, if you're worried so much about being associated as a protester or what, you know, your image connected to some sort of protest group, then maybe you should reconsider protesting. Or is that mm -hmm. that, a, that that not a popular opinion? I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think about. I, I totally get what they're you know they're saying. And like, I've encountered many protesters who wouldn't give me their name. You know, they would say, "No, I'm not going to give you my name." Which fine, so be it. I can still publish a photo without a name. Um, I mean, that just happens, you know. But uh, to to go out and protest and then I guess almost be sort of shocked that people are covering the protest that you're out at. You know, it's. I don't know. What are your thoughts right. on that? One of the one of the articles that I read about about um, this uh, Northwestern incident was, uh, you know, uh, somebody made the point that it, if you're upset and you don't want to, you know, be seen protesting, then, you know, do something like writing a letter as opposed to protesting. Sure. Um, but if you're if you're protesting out on the street, um, you know, be prepared to be prepared to have people. Um, document that. Yeah, especially um, if, you're, if you're in public. And this kind of slides into another point that I, that I kind of took away from the whole thing. Um, I read a I've read a couple um, uh, responses that journalists had about this. There were two good points by uh, Dan Baltz here. Let me pull it up. Pull it up. Dan Dan Baltz with the uh, uh, Washington Post. He said college journalists are under new pressures. Witness what Harvard Crimson just went through. Rather than jumping on the Northwestern student journalist, we need to help explain to other students the basic practices and values of good journalism and why it matters. Uh, and Maggie Haberman with the New York Times <clears throat> said something um, similar. Um, one of the biggest problems U.S. journalists face in, the, in this day and age is how few people understand what standard news gathering process looks like. Mm -hmm. A student newspaper saying normal process is somehow a bad thing is incredibly troubling. Yeah. So, I, I mean, another good point to, to think about is um, perhaps we aren't educating the general public in terms of how news gets reported when they pick up the newspaper or they turn on the television, um, you know, the process of the process that that reporters and, and visual journalists go through to make these images and to write these stories. Um, uh, it, it is, po you know, it, it is possible that, that, you know, perhaps we can all do a better job at educating the public on how that happens. We're, um, but with that, I mean, it, we seem to be fighting, you know, a, a, you know, a, a government and a, a 
party that is really kind of coming after and calling the media fake media and 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 putting this. So we're in a dangerous time where I, I think that uh, yeah, as much as we need to educate the public, we need to educate them more because there's all this false narrative being put upon them. Are, are you seeing that? Uh, uh, you know, you know, when you have you know this half the politicians out there saying fake media and they're they're any of the people is like this is a scary time where the media has never been more important to show the truths of what's going on out there where you have a law a lot of people that are actually kind of being convinced that you guys are not on the right side are you feeling that at all in this temperament or this climate um uh you know i get, I've, I've been to many trump rallies and um uh i've been to many um political rallies with um other candidates um i i would say personally uh i you know minus you know aside from aside from you know one or two one or two um uh unpleasant instances you know when when the president stands up and and says his lines about the media um everybody you know, turns and boos. Um, but aside from that, um, the one-on-one encounters with, um, even with Trump supporters have, have not been, um, it, it hasn't been, uh, much of a negative. Um, you don't think, you know, what, when, they don't feel like the credit, your credibility though, <laughs> do they feel like even though you're there, they may not come after you, but they, you know, that they're like doubting you, uh, you know, and your credibility of what you're trying to portray. That's possible, but um, yeah. that's not a dialogue that I've I've had with yeah. with, uh, with any of the um, Trump supporters. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to downplay what he's doing, but um, I, you know, some some people in the audience when they turn around, they have smiles on their faces. You know, they, uh, you know that, and then after after the fact that you know people are. Pleasant enough, you know, we can say hello and talk and yeah. um, have a have a dialogue. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I thought that was an interesting point, you know, with regard to educating the public, educating people, you know, understanding how news is supposed to be interpreted. And I think that's, you know, like you said, these are students, right? So they're students going to school. If they're journalism students, this is the job or primarily the job should be, you know, partly, uh, you know, the job of their journalism professor. Right. So but I think, yeah, in terms of the larger public, sure. And I think that's a fight that you know has to happen every day. And I, you know, I think I haven't done really, you know, widespread freelance photojournalism as much as I used to in the last few years. But even when I was not doing it as much a few years ago, you know, Every now and then you get the person who's like, you know, why are you taking my picture? You know, it's like, it doesn't matter if you're out in public and out covering a news story. There's people who are just like, why are you taking my picture? You know, why, why are you out here with your camera? And I think that's been more prevalent because of the sort of explosion in photography, you know, through either the phone or the sort of democratization of, of less expensive uh, SLR style cameras. Um, so now everybody has it. So there's more of a like, who are you? Oh, you're a freelancer. You're what? What organization do you work for? Uh, whereas you wouldn't have seen that perhaps maybe ten years ago, where you know again, you know, getting that kind of equipment was a little bit more difficult. Um, but I mean, with something like you know being with the AP, you have credentials, right? I mean, your your photographers have credentials. They have AP credentials, or they they have sort of the because it's a freelance. Oh organ- my god. This is this is Washington. We have so many credentials. I mean, right. I'll, I'll just show you what I'm wearing around my neck right now. Nice. This is my a- AP credential, and then uh, I have White House credential, State Department credential. Oh my God! <laughs> Capitol Hill credential, and that and that's and that's usually what I end up carrying around and um, and and swapping around. But um, then we have sports credentials. I mean, it it's a lot, and then. Uh, you know, on the day you get you get a another credential for the event uh, mm-hmm. that you wear on top of that. So and Secret Service credential and all this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it, there's a difference there. We're, we're talking about kind of on the street kind of things. Yeah. And, and you're right. People on the street have become a lot more savvy um, as m- more people have 
smartphones and just a, the ability to take your photo or video um, at all times. Um, people want to know who you are and what, what you're doing there, um, which is fine. And, um, um, and you know, it, it kind of starts a dialogue. Uh, sometimes it, it can be a positive thing. Yeah. Um, then maybe 60% of the time, 70% of the time when we're covering the way, the way we're covering, um, the president or the uh, politicians on Capitol Hill, we are, we're kind of inside a bubble, especially with the president. Right. Um, when we travel with him, we are in his bubble that we travel in their motorcade. Um, we fly on air force one. And so we are kind of in this insulated, uh, insulated bubble basically mm -hmm. um yeah. where the secret service has screened us a million ways and um and we are uh clean as they call it uh, right and and we we have to kind of stay we can't just wander off whatever in, outside the building or what you know we kind of have to stay in uh in kind of a a bubble mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <laughs> so, how's mar-a-lago uh, it's, it's beautiful. West Palm beach, Palm beach, uh, there it's a, it's a nice place to, to, uh, to go on, uh, to Thanksgiving and Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can talk about Mar-a-Lago if you'd like. Well, I want to, I just want to close off this one, you know, Obviously, sure. these these kids who are, you know, again, they're students. They have the right to make mistakes. This is the time to make them, as many people have made that argument, and I believe and also agree with. But, I mean, what kind of rude awakening do these kids, both on the protesting side and on the journalism side, have when they enter, like, the real world? You know, like, you're going to come to work and you know, apply for the AP and be like, okay, well, you're going to take people's pictures, and they may not be happy about it. You know, it's like, but, you know, I, I don't want to, like, offend anybody. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. What are you, you going to tell these, you know, the, these, you know, the journalists? Like, listen, I get it. You don't want to mess with people's feelings, but you know, how, how do you sort of break that to them? I, it, it's a, I, I think it's a case by case basis. It, it's um, you have to measure the news value, and at right. the end of the day, your responsibility is to report what you're seeing in front of you accurately and fairly. And, um, a lot of times people don't want their picture taken. And, um, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's a major news event, um, you know, that's, that I'm sorry. It's something we have to report. It's, it's too valuable not to, not to cover. Right. Again, like I said, it's a news judgment. It's, you know, if it's, um, if it's a hurricane and somebody has just lost a family member, uh, I'm just making this up and, uh, you know, it's just you and you make a really compelling picture. Um, and they, you know, they're in a, they're in the most traumatized position in their life. And you, you know, if, if they, if they ask you not to, you know, I, I might say, I might respect their, their wishes and keep a dialogue going. I mean, it, if they lost their, if somebody lost their, uh, their loved one and something could have been done, but wasn't because of some sort of, uh, you know, government screw up or something like that. Again, I'm just making this up. Uh, you know, if you keep that dialogue open and say, look, you know, your, your, your family member might be here, uh, if not for, you know, such and such. Uh, you know, you keep that dialogue going and then they say, you know, please, please use this photo. This is something that, um, you know, that, that, that brings, um, you know, like a, the, the, a value to, to this horrible thing that happened to me. Right. I'm making this completely up whole cloth. He's not making I, it up. These are true things that happened. <laughs> but, they, but, 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 but instances like this do happen. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and you have to, you have to make those calls. Sure. No, I, we've had many guests on the show who've talked about either not shooting something or not publishing something because of sort of the emotion, emotional impact 
I think most recently, I think it was maybe Noah Berger who talked about his him covering, you know, the the wildfires in California, yeah, and true. yeah, so he was shooting some stuff. It was like some gruesome, you know, death and and whatnot, and he just didn't feel comfortable publishing that, you know, or sending that to his publisher. And that kind of made me think, like, has there been ever been an instance where, you know, you as sort of the editor or whatnot have, you know, seen a photographer's work and be like, hey, did you, did, are, is there anything else in your take that maybe you want to share? Or do you just kind of go like, okay, well, they sent whatever they sent. Me? Andrew, yeah. I've never edited. Okay. I've never been an editor. <laughs> Roger that. Okay. Uh, I usually send... My best stuff, but I will say for and again, I, I am not in the in the type of photography that I am covering. Ninety nine percent of the time is not of of this life or death situation. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, but um, Ooh, I'd love to hear about know, that point one percent. A lot of times, the you know the most disturbing, gruesome images are are not what ends up running anyway, right? Um, just, just because of the um, the Cheerios you know, test, the nature, yeah, right, the nature of a of a of a family newspaper or a family news organization, so. right. No, absolutely. And I don't think you need to necessarily publish the most gruesome stuff to get your point across either. I was just curious, you know, again, had, had there been ever instance, you know, that you're aware of where again maybe something didn't go to the, you know, go go through, and then you know you were like, oh, there's there's something here, you're. You know, not, I, mean, I don't know, have you ever been questioned about your work? You know, you submit your stuff and then they're like, hey, was there anything else in this take? Maybe can you go back to your original take and see if there's a, perhaps a better photo of this mother crying? I don't know. Uh, typically, I, I think I'm a fairly solid self-editor in the field. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. I, I think I usually send what I think to be the most impactful picture of my Okay. Um, I will say that AP a lot of times we we spend a lot of time shooting um, people in audiences and you know down the road six months a year later um, people say hey I noticed that in the archive you were at this photo event um, did you get a picture of this guy in the audience or something like that and it turns out to be somebody um, of of importance and and you know that um, the uh, the Ukrainian story um, that is a more recent instance of of um, it, it wasn't something that I shot, but but um, some of my uh, colleagues went back into their archive and they were able to find um, these these two uh, these two that were arrested at Ellis um, at, at various um, um, Trump events. So wow, interesting. So all, we save everything we shoot. So we, Indeed. Well, wasn't uh, wasn't Monica Lewinsky that shot just some sort of in the archives, sort of you know somebody remember exactly. that they shot that and they look familiar, you know? 